Packer and Durham on a Thursday, 844-SAY-ACCN, the number. I know your head's spinning with those FBI numbers. Drive you crazy. Absolutely <laughs> insane. But we're going to switch gears on you and go a little softball right now. Yeah. John Rittman is the uh, head coach of the Clemson Tigers. How many is this for him now? Uh, this would be um, six. Half six? dozen for Coach. All right, half dozen. So, Coach, by the way, just so you know, you're within range of the Packer and Durham mug. It takes four more appearances four more. and you get the Packer and Durham mug. Yep. <laughs> Let's get it done. I'm ready. Anytime <laughs> you guys want me on, I'm more than welcome to join. Well, this is game day, so everything okay with doing this on game day? You know, I mean, I know Notre Dame's in town. You know, these are all big this time of year. Don't have to tell me that. So we're we're kind of pushing the old proverbial luck here. But as Pac said, going to break, we're not bad on game day, are we, Pac? Gene yeah, Damari was on this week. Yeah. Allied on uh, Tuesday night for W. So, yeah, this works. It always works. Any Anything that uh, will help us get a W, I'm all in, as Dabo would say. So... <laughs> Um, game day, yeah. I mean, I'm just usually pacing around waiting for the game. So uh, anything to take some time away and enjoy my conversations with you two all the time. So we're ready to go. All right, we got a top 25 matchup, but uh, hey, it's the first time you've ever seen Notre Dame. Mm. So what do we know about the Irish? Oh, they're they're a very good team. You know, they have uh, some upperclassmen that uh, have been there, done that. Um, Good pitching staff, good hitters up and down the lineup. I think it's a really good matchup. You know, we didn't get to play them last year because of COVID. Um, so we're looking forward to it. Um, we, I think we're, we're very prepared in regards to, you know, the schedule that we played up to this point. And our last three weekends are really tough. You know, we have Notre Dame this weekend, Florida State next weekend, and then Georgia Tech. So um, it all starts tonight against the Fighting Irish and uh, looking forward to a great series. Well, you mentioned the league and Notre Dame for the first time here. They're in the top 25. Um, And I've mentioned this kind of in a collection with you and Marissa Young at Duke. It it appears that your two programs have kind of solidified the softball empire that is the ACC now. I mean, Virginia Tech, Florida State are a remarkable series. We know what Duke did last year in the tournament. You won the regular season. All of a sudden, Coach, it feels like that when you came on board and launched Clemson a year after Duke launched, it feels like the ACC has kind of taken those steps forward now as a as a really good league on a national level, not just within its own yard. I agree 100%. You know, our conference, really from top to bottom, I mean, certainly you can look at our top teams – Virginia Tech, Florida State, Duke, Clemson, Georgia Tech right now. Um, but top to bottom, if you look at the RPI, we we played Pitt last week up at Pitt. And I think they're they're currently right now, because of their schedule, last in the conference. But, you know, their team is, is much better than that. I think they're a 55 RPI this week. So top mm. to bottom, you know, you, you have to you have to bring your A game every week if you expect to win in this conference, and especially if you want to try to win a series. So, um, but certainly the top end of this conference nationally, um, I think we're getting a lot more respect. Um, we're getting talked about a lot more. You see us on TV a lot more, of course, with the ACC network. That's been huge for our conference. And um, I, I think it's just, it, it's really exciting. It's an exciting time to be in the league. Um, and, and really, you know, if you look at it, there's just so many great programs, so many great coaches and, you know, we kind of up the ante, so to speak. John, uh, I think Clemson softball and the first person that pops in my head is Valerie Cagle Mm. and she just caught the world by storm. Uh, What have you seen with her with a, now another year of maturation and everybody understands who she is, whether she's got a bat or whether she's in the circle. Valerie is just such a key component to our program, you know, and and like you said, you know, Mark, she's a year older. She's a year wiser. She's dealing, you know, knows how to deal with failure a little bit better. Um, she's dealing with the expectations now, as as is the rest of our program. You know, we, we literally have a target on our back every time we step on the field. Now we're not sneaking up on anybody. But, you know, Valerie has just really come into her own, um, you know, you look at her stats this year and they may be a little down, but she's in, in recent, you know, probably the past month, she's really done well in the circle for us. Um, I think our whole team, you know, our confidence got shaken a little bit early on because we played such a tough schedule. And then 
we open up with the Virginia Tech and Duke in conference. And, um, you know, that's, that's not an easy chore. And I, I, we went one and five in those six games and we didn't press the panic button. Um, we kept true to what we do and our work ethic and how we prepare ourselves. And, and now all of a sudden we're nine and six in conference. So, um, but Valerie, of course, has been a huge part of that, but we're, we're getting help with her in the circle with Millie Thompson, Reagan, mm. Spencer, Brooke McCubb. And so it's truly a team effort this year. John, I, I want to use an analogy here. This program is a little bit like raising a child, I guess, right? When the baby arrives, everybody's excited and how cute it is and everything else. But then all of a sudden the teething and all the other things happen to the toddler. You're, you're kind of coming out of that. It feels like you're kind of moving through the toddler stage here. This The maturity of this program is going to have some highs and lows. And it's almost like when you just described Valerie's kind of dealing with uh, kind of being the target and your team dealing as being in the target, it almost like you had a, a sense of expectation about that in your plan as Clemson's head coach. Yeah, you know, you hit the nail on the head, Wes. We we had success so early that really nobody was prepared for it. You know, I mean, we knew we had a good ball club. Uh, you know, the COVID year, we got off to kind of a slow start and get hot, got hot, and then the season shut down. And and last year, you know, it was like nothing could go wrong. Everything was lined up perfectly. We were winning every series, um, made postseason for the first time. So just a lot to build on, a lot of excitement. Uh, this year, we, you know, we made the the schedule a little bit tougher. We challenged ourselves early on. And, and like you said, there's some growing pains there, you know, with, with the expectations um, from our coaching staff, from our players and from our fans, you know? So, um, but the good news is we keep growing. We're, we're taking, we're taking baby steps. So if we were teething last year, we're now walking this year and ready to run. We had Graham Neff uh, on the show recently, the new AD at, at Clemson. And he talked about, already conversations about expanding the stadium. I mean, goodness. I, mean, I was down there for Dabo's event Friday night, and, of course, it butts right into the softball park. And I'm like, wow, man, the place is beautiful. And already we're talking about adding seats. I mean, that, that's got to feel good, right? Big time. There's no question. You know, I, I tell people all the time I pinch myself to make sure this is all really happening. Um, but it, it's a great problem to have. Obviously, you know, we don't want to turn people away that want to come watch Clemson softball. Um, and I think our administration realizes that, you know, the the demand for tickets is there and it's it's been there for the last year and a half. So um, we've, we've got a lot of people looking into it and it's exciting. You know, the, the stadium's not even three years old and we're already looking to expand. And, you know, Graham Neff is just such a great, you know, athletic director, he's only been on the job since December. And, um, you know, he's, we, we have complete confidence in what he's doing with the program. He's, he's one of those young up and comers, I guess you would say in, in the administration world, but, uh, I know he's going to do a great job in helping us solve this solution. And, you know, we got two brand new programs in lacrosse and gymnastics coming on. So we're, we're building their, their facility. So there's a lot going on to be excited about at Clemson. Well, here's the other part too, and about your team. And I was looking through some of this, uh, some of these numbers here. I, I'm seeing that we got a lot of hits and a lot of runs, and uh, the pitching staff's a 186 ERA in 266 innings and 268 strikeouts here. So, what are we, what are we most pleased with as we work our way to mid-April here? Well, I think you know, I think our pitching staff has just been so consistent this year. They've enabled us to compete at the highest level against the, the best teams in the country. Um, if you look at our strength of schedule, it's it's right up there, you know, with the top in the, of the country. And, and our pitching staff has just done a tremendous job there. Um, offensively, you know, playing such good programs early in the season with great pitching, our offense kind of struggled. Um, but as of late, we've really been hitting the ball well as a team. We've been getting production up and down the lineup and, I think that's that's really helped us turn it around in conference. Um, but you know, from a coaching standpoint, it's it's all about you know doing the little things right, uh, continuing to improve you know week to week as as we get into the the heart and the bulk of this season, and and really about enjoying the grind and the preparation that it takes to to be a championship team. John, final question: uh, We've been asking this to coaches the last couple of months, and it's kind of apropos here. 
Uh, but for you personally, <laughs> uh, what is your favorite walk-up music? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, if they had coaches walk-up music, I, I could always go the classic route way, you know. But I think everybody's got kind of their their genre they go to. But I, I would probably have to go with something out of the Eric Church playlist. Mm. Well, it won't be Carolina. Like, uh, who had that? Mac Brown. Is that Mac? Yeah, Mac Brown. with yeah. Carolina. That yeah. made sense. Yeah, I'd, well, I'd they play in the, they play in the stadium else. all the time in Chapel Hill. Yeah. What are you going to go with? What was? Which one? Um. Oh, my gosh. There's so many. You're putting me on the spot right now. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I, I couldn't <laughs> pick one. I'd have to look at the list and... You know, I'm one of those guys that just puts in the AirPods and just enjoys the music. That's the man. That's the way to do it now. That is absolutely the way to do it. Hey, great to see you. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Anytime. I, I got four more before I get the mug, so keep me in mind. That's it. And the <laughs> next time you come on, my man, we're going to crank up some Eric Church yeah, for we'll you. We'll get some Eric Church for you. There you go. <laughs> see you soon, John. Thank you. Appreciate All it. Right.